<laughs> uh, welcome to episode four of All Arcadians on SexyHackers.com. <laughs> hey, if you like the show, please remember to subscribe, ring the bell so you know when we drop a new uh, episode, and if you really love us, go ahead and write us a review so we can find more listeners just as cool as you are. Only good mm. reviews. Five stars and yeah. Mm. yeah. Follow us on social media, that's Facebook and Instagram for All Arcadians, and if you're listening to the podcast and would like to see our beautiful faces, be sure to check out the video option on YouTube. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, also, thanks to Sexy Hackers for sponsoring the show and recording the show in their studio. Be sure to check out SexyHackers.com where you can get some sweet, sweet merch. Merch. Such yes, as merch. Look at it. Look at it. And you can follow yeah. them on social Bye. media such as Facebook and Instagram as well. And now, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into this episode. Absolutely. Mm. Welcome to the land of Arcadia, a land filled with wild magics, mystical creatures, and epic heroes. These adventurers are trained for their futures at prestigious four-year questing schools known as universities. But not all heroes graduate or attend college, and in Arcadia, the best of the rest came to be known as the All Arcadians! We join our heroes Carl and Dean Claudio and their four idiot servants on a pleasant stroll about town. So if you think about it, this quest for the seven office supplies is just a ripoff of Harry Potter's quest for the Horcruxes. Shoshana sees your point, Obelisk, but a MacGuffin of some sort is a pretty common plot device. But seven Horcruxes? Seven office supplies? I'm just saying, if I were Joe Rowling, I would have called my lawyer by now. I concur with Shoshana. My Rowling herself modeled the Horcruxes after Tolkien's iconic quest to destroy the One Ring. Yep, fair point. What do you think, Barb? Well, according to Joseph Campbell, most stories are variations on the same 12 stages of the hero's journey. In that sense, the magical objects are tertiary to our growth as individuals. At the very least, can we all just agree that it's lazy writing? Yeah. Oh. Obviously. Definitely. Obviously. Yeah. 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 Hey, why so quiet, to Becky? Oh, uh, no reason. Just nervous, I guess. Nervous about what? The new mission. Are you worried you won't remember the names of the things? I am. There are a lot of names. Office Max, and Chain Mail, and Kaleidoscope. Catastrophes. Catastrophes. It's cool, Barb. To be honest, I was tuning in and out for the whole second half of the last episode, so I don't know any of the important names. Most of the time, the <laughs> goddess doesn't remember any of your names. No, it's not the names. Dean Claudio promised the narrator would reintroduce important concepts when they come up again. <clears throat> Uh, Dean Claudio is in charge of the University of Arcadia and is their benefactor on this quest. It's just a lot of pressure all at once. As de facto team leader... What makes you think you're the leader? I thought I was team leader. As team leader, I take personal responsibility for the fate of the team and the fate of the world. I mean, what if we screw it all up? Well, not to worry, Tebeki. I believe that your team is destined to rise to this challenge. You mean it? Uh, absolutely. I have learned never to underestimate what adventurers can accomplish. As it says in the Book of Marvin, never was a mountain high enough, nor a valley low enough, nor a river wide enough to keepeth me from completing my quest, baby. Wow. Words to grow on. Mm. I prefer the scrolls of earth, wind, and fire. And so our heroes continued their pleasant stroll talking and laughing and debating whether Harry Potter adheres to the three-act structure until something occurred to Barb the Barbarian Bouncer. Hey, weren't we supposed to go somewhere? No, no, no you are! Are! Oh, oh, hey, What? Uh, what did I do? You reminded us of where we're going! I did? Shoshana is vexed. Thanks, she says! Imbecile! Now we have to forget all over again. Thanks, Barb! Okay, okay. It, it's all right, everyone. Let's just try again. Everyone, forget where we're going. Just out of curiosity, where are we going? You forgot again? Mm. Yes. Obviously, yes. We're going shopping. Mm. We need supplies specific to our classes to go adventuring. Shoshana is a rogue, so she needs lockpicks and snaky boots. I'm a ranger, so I need a magic crossbow and magic arrows. But I'm a sorcerer, so I need live organs and children's tears. Oh, yeah. I remember now. Carl said she knew of a place in town. Ooh, I want to get a stick to hit stuff with. A place in town? Come on, Barb! Not just any place. The best fantasy equipment store in all the land! Uh, the best discount fantasy equipment store within the university's budget for this quest. I thought the university wasn't paying for this quest. Oh, it's not. Yes, that's right! The best fantasy equipment store in all the land! The one, the only, 
Abercrombie and Squibs. Ooh, sounds cool. What are we waiting for? As I have already explained many times, Abercrombie and Squibs is an enchanted store. It can only be found by those who are not looking for it. That sounds like a terrible business decision. I like it. Gods only shop at stores that don't exist, like PR 9 and 3 quarters or Kmart. Why else do you think we've been walking around talking about nothing? I assumed we were growing closer as friends. <laughs> The problem is, Barb, you're a little too good at forgetting. Isn't that the point? Well, obviously you can't forget totally. Then you'd have to go home. Or repeatedly ask the same sabotaging question. There's a sweet spot. You want to be distracted but vaguely aware, like watching your kid's Little League game? What the hell's is a Little League? Or it's like falling asleep to an episode of Frasier. You know that something witty is going on, but you're not consciously following any of the jokes. That's me anytime I'm watching Frasier. What the hell is a Frasier? All right, I think he's got it. Awesome! We'll be there in no time. Five hours later. So he's a psychiatrist, but he has a radio show. Yeah, so that's the part that doesn't totally hold up to scrutiny. I was going to say, who would willingly be on a radio show? Audio mediums are dead. Video is where it's at. When suddenly... Hey, look. That last conversation was the exact perfect amount of jackassery. It's Abercrombie and Squibs! The adventurers see a suburban mall storefront magically appear out of thin air. Quickly, everyone! Get inside before it disappears again! Uh, But do it sort of casual-like. You can't let the door know we're too interested or it won't let us in. And so our heroes enter Abercrombie and Squibs... Careful not to pay too much attention. Ow! Watch where you're going, Barb! No, Bob, do not watch where you are going! I am so confused! The store is so confusing! After a bit of jostling, our heroes find their way into the store. Immediately, they are impressed with the hip, trendy vibe. What the hell's is this place? Abercrombie and Squibs. Drink it in, gang. Why are the lights so low? I can't see the merchandise, even with my plus three to investigation checks and semi-darkness. The music is upsetting me. Uh, the sales clerks are wearing shirts. I have a sudden impulse to buy polos. What's a polo? I have no idea. Oh, come on, guys. I think this place is great. Let's go get our equipment. Who do we buy stuff from, Carl? Let's hope that it's Aquarius Abercrombie. She's a former fitness model, current business mogul, and an exceptional sales elf. She'll do right by us. Agreed. I only hope her business partner isn't here. Why? Hey, everybody. It's me, Squibs McKenzie. Everyone's favorite gnome. Oh, boy. Our heroes watch, bemused, as an effervescent and bizarre gnome bounds into the room and shakes everyone's hands. Squibs. Huh. Good to see you again. I don't suppose Aquarius is here today? <laughs> no way, Carl. Today is Squibs' day. Follow me to the back room, everyone. Special customers like you deserve the VIP treatment. Well, all right, everyone, let's get our stuff. And we'll be right back after a brief word from our sponsor. Hey, are you tired of laundry? (laughs) Yeah, me too. Luckily, there's a solution. (laughs) Throw your old used clothes away. They're no good anymore. And get yourself a brand new wardrobe at SexyHackers.com, your one-stop shop for all new stellar designs. SexyHackers.com. Ooh, nice shirt. And we're back. They follow the bouncy gnome into a quiet back room of the store. While they walk, to Becky poses a question. Wait, how is this supposed to work? We haven't been paid yet. Claudio, can we assume that the university will reimburse us? Uh, you are free to assume anything you like. Goddesses do not carry money, mortal. They deal exclusively in Bitcoin. I don't have any cash either. Well, fidget spinners. Barb, what about you? Don't you have money from your bounder job? Sorry, I have all my wages in the stock market. Lately, I've been putting all my gold into horses. Really? That's surprising. Wait for it, Tabeki. Oh, absolutely. Livestock market horses are the best. You can really put a lot of gold in there. Their stomachs are enormous. And there it is. Guys, this isn't that kind of store. They don't accept gold here. You don't? I sure don't. Gold is for suckers. I put all my gold into horses. Uh, Exactly. Thank you. Then how do we pay? It's like this, doll. You tell me what you're willing to give up, and I'll give you something of an equivalent value. Ooh, twist. I should have warned you, every transaction here is a supernatural exchange. You may offer anything you wish, anything, but be warned. Whatever you offer up, be sure it is something you can live without. Feel free to talk it over. Give it a think, and let's make some magic. Our heroes huddle up, away from Squibs, to consider his mysterious offer. What do you think, gang? I'm in. 
In group yesterday, we talked about not forming emotional attachments to material objects. You still go to group? I'm Jeff's sponsor. What about you, Obelis? Sure, I make deals with the devil all of the time and usually come out ahead. At the moment, he owes me a soul. <laughs> Shoshana? The goddess will play his game. All right, let's do it! Hey, Squibs, you've got a deal, but don't try any funny business. You don't want to get on the bad side of T-T-T-Becky and the Jets. No. Absolutely not. Okay, we were the Beckettes. Wonderful. Step to the line and tell no lies. Make your offer and receive your prize. The barbarian bouncer mm. approaches first. I offer my favorite tooth. Wonderful. In an instant, Barb's left canine disappears. Oh, but behold, in Barb's hand appears <gasps> an enormous wooden club embedded with a giant fang. Just like he always wanted. Just like I always wanted. Behold, your new weapon to hit anyone and everyone in your path. I call it the social club. I love it. Thanks, Web. Next to the line, the goddess Shoshana. The goddess offers Barb's second favorite tooth. What? Done. Barb's favorite molar disappears. Oh. And magic boots appear on Shoshana's feet. They fit perfectly and, of course, have that new shoe smell. The put a sock in it boots. Put them on and you'll be twice as sneaky. They also happen to be limited edition Air Jordans. So if you get tired of them, you can sell them on eBay for like 200 bucks. The goddess is pleased. Next up, the half demon Obelis. I offer. Stop that. Barb's third favorite tooth. Stop that. Poof, tooth gone and in its place, a gleaming silver pendant. A necklace to enhance your rage powers. You'll curse twice as many organs now. Sweet. I was hoping to level up to pancreas magic. What's it called? The organ grinder? The sorcerer's rage? It's called... Necklace. Mm. What, you want me to name everything? It's a piece of freaking jewelry. Come on. Yeah, shut up, Tebeki. Sorry. Chastised, Tebeki approaches Squibs. I offer... One of Barb's teeth? Oh, no. oh serious? Oh, God. No. Wait, what? Not cool, Tabeki. Sorry. But hasn't Barb suffered enough? Sorry. What else you got? I offer... Oh, I offer my encyclopedic knowledge of 90s sitcoms. Even Frasier? Even Frasier. Damn. All right. A flash of light. A magical noise. <laughs> What? Something needed to happen besides the flash of light. This is a mostly audio medium. For the ranger, here it is. Your new magic bow and arrow. What's it called? It's called Bow Bridges. It's pretty good, you know. It gets the job done, but at the same time, you're vaguely aware that there's a more famous weapon out there that you would have rather used. Sounds perfect! And so, new weapons in hand, our heroes celebrate their successful exchanges with the gnome Squibs. Thanks, Squibs. I knew I could count on you. <gasps> oh, don't thank me yet. What was that? Suddenly, armed police dwarves swarm the back room of the store. Freeze, punks! We got you surrounded. You're under arrest for unlicensed adventuring. Squibs, you bastard! You called the cops on us? Sorry, toots! Your friend Boss put a bounty on your little potty's heads. I'm cashing in and moving out! Officers, let it be known that I did not know any of these rapscallions. I was being held against my will. Claudio, how could you? Sorry, Tebeki. Uh, quickly, Tebeki, we made a contingency plan for an emergency such as this. We did? Yes, remember? We modeled it after that episode of Frasier we all watched together. Oh, dang it! The noble Dean Claudio flees to the police and is quickly escorted out of the room, wrapped in a blanket. Wait! What's a Frasier? Oh, oh, I could have for that one. Oh, for God's sake, Barb. Get them out of here, I'll hold them off. Carl! No! Just shut up and go, Tabeki. You four owe me big time after this. Magic, magic, magic! She's got a wand, she's got a wand! Barb scoops up his companions. We're out of here! Dragon horse! Barb, for the last time, that is not a good battle cry! You'll never take me alive, coppers! Trojan horse! And so our valiant heroes make good their escape, while the selfless Carl holds off the police. I'm going to miss our employer! I'm a fence, goddammit! I knew that! Well, uh, that's definitely not how our heroes wanted their shopping trip to end. Some orange Julius would have been much more satisfying. 
Will Carl escape the police? Will our heroes be able to find the chainmail without their benefactors? Why does a magical store sell polos? Find out next time on The All Arcadians! Another one for the road, Jeff. Keep going. For God's sakes, Jeff. Did you hear how long that conversation took? Give me an actual pour. Actually, you know what? I'll just take the whole bottle. Uh, try to get it all back in there, please. Carl, what are you doing? I'm preparing for an entire journey with those idiots. Fine, but wouldn't you rather purchase more conventional fare? That bottle is pure kerosene. I saw Jeff filling the lamps with it. We've only covered one of their backstories. Hmm. Fair point. A bartender! Make it two! <laughs> There's a good man.